Hello, Knights of Nia. 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 Nye. Um, still not really sure about that title and if it's going to stick, but it's the best I could do on short notice in my journey from rapidly identifying as an NI Dom to now an NE user. Um, so that's just what you get. But anyways, today I wanted to talk about some of the thoughts that I have on FI. Now discovering that I am an FI Dom after all this time, it's been most interesting. And I actually took a bunch of notes to help me stay on track because otherwise I do tend to just meander from loose point to loose point. Um, but I would, I thought I'd try to make this as painless as possible. So FI, um, and a lot of this I'm pulling directly from CT's uh, material that they have compiled. I read through multiple articles and some old um, posts on their, um, their forum. And then, you know, comparing it to my own experience, especially as someone who related to the INFJ personality for so long. So this video is primarily going to be for people who are maybe curious about the difference between FE and FI and how maybe with CT especially, they have boiled down the concepts to something that is more tangible and concrete. In contrast to popular, more murky definitions that can leave people feeling very confused. And like, I know for me, initially I found a lot of depth and meaning out of articles that I would and blogs that I was reading about INFJs which I think ironically now might have actually been written by confused INFPs like myself and um kind of just further muddying the waters of like what is what and again like one thing that I want to touch on again is how much I appreciate what Auburn is doing with his team at CT just making what was so murky and subjective very clear and he is working to develop a psychological component which i do want to touch on today and one thing that he was quick to tell me is that there's a lot of overlap between what would be essentially a sealy fi dom especially a sealy F-I-N-E like myself versus kind of like the um, the myth of the INFJ, right? Um, someone who is very, um, oh, what's the word? Uh, dreamy, very caring, very abstract in their thinking. Um, emotionally sensitive, permeable to the environment around them, that all in the CT system is more related to FI, specifically Sealy FI. So, um, and hopefully adding a little bit more clarity, I want to talk about some of the things I've been reading about FI and how it's helped me to better understand myself. And I'll just start with saying that FI is an explorer compass function. And what that means is that we're always searching for a higher truth and a greater understanding. We always feel like we're on this quest, right? And it's like where FE would be how understanding the world and people from like the outside outside of themselves in fi is very much understanding ourselves in relation to the rest of the world where we are always examining 
how do I exist in relation to this? How do I exist in this space? Um, how do I be my most authentic self in this environment where I might feel uncomfortable? How am I going to bring my authenticity here where I might feel unsure of myself? Like, how do I relate to this other person? Right? So, if I, we can't help but make everything personal. And that is one of the main differences in the introverted judging functions of TI and FI is that TI is very abiotic, more impersonal, and FI is very personal and biotic, where we are looking for the humanity, you know, so to say, in everything that we encounter. Like when I am even like talking about my pets, I almost ascribe like human qualities to them, right? Because I can't separate like the essence of a being, their emotional core from who they are. I can't look at that in just a completely detached way. So in like my search for truth, when I am drawn to other people, I want to see them at like the core of who they are. That's what I'm interested in. And so for me to see someone with a lot of defense mechanisms and, and you know, hiding behind masks, I would probably rapidly lose interest in a person like that because I would still feel curiosity, but I'm also like, this person is not open and I just am not going to have much of a connection with them. So I might poke a little bit, like nicely, just to kind of see like what's underneath all of that, you know, like, who are you really? And that's the way I like, I love to connect with people. I want to create like a safe space for people where I, where people feel safe around me to be their true self. And that's what I really want to do. And actually in learning all this about myself, realizing that I am an FI down, it's been just very clarifying for me in trying to find direction for my life right now, where in a lot of ways I feel like I'm starting over and I'm trying to find where I'm going to go with my life from this point on, because like one significant chapter of my life has drawn to a close and a lot of that was very traumatic. You know, I, I lost my youngest child. I used to have two little ones, right, in elementary school who needed a lot of help. And then, and then I lost my youngest child. And then my old, my youngest, now my youngest one is growing up. He's 13 now. So I've just been trying to like reassess what am I going to do with my life? And what really matters to me and realizing as um an fi dom what i really want to do is to use my experiences to foster an environment with other people where they can feel safe and where they do feel like they can let down their defenses and so this has inspired me lately to consider going back to school for massage therapy. And that was what I was doing initially before losing my daughter and then kind of everything falling apart. I really love the idea of that very safe, healing touch that will, you know, enable people to feel safe enough and, you know, physiologically shift into their parasympathetic nervous system where they can just calm everything down and just let whatever bubble up to the surface that needs to. But anyways, that was a long um, kind of tangent. But so Celie F.I. Doms, it can come across as very F.E. like because we do care deeply about the emotional states of the people around us. 
and we are incredibly permeable to the emotional states of other people, to the environment around us. And that is a huge point of confusion, I believe, in like mainstream MBTI stuff. And why so many INFPs get confused, many who are much smarter than I am, um, have self-identified as an INFJ because of the murkiness around it. But um, yes, Sealy FI, very permeable, right? And <laughs> sensitive and there's the, you know, the fun mythological aspect of it as like, it's the fairy energy. It's a little bit ethereal. It's uh, a little bit magical, which is honestly really fun to embrace. Um, INFPs rock. And, you know, it's not a downgrade to go from being an INFJ to an INFP. Um, but so back to FI, and this is what really convinced me, yes, I am actually an FI Dom. What really drives me is authenticity. And what I equate to brave is a willingness to be emotionally vulnerable, like to show up in the world as your true self. And how I want to relate to others is that I sometimes like aggressively put my truest self out there because I want other people to feel at ease around me and safe. I'll be like, I'll be the biggest weirdo in the room. <laughs> so you can feel a sense of safety to be yourself. And I just, I love that type of connection where if I am being willing and brave enough to be this very true version of myself and it helps someone else to feel like emboldened to maybe drop that mask a little bit, drop some defense mechanisms, like I honestly kind of um, live for that. And another thing FI is all about is the dynamics of the heart. Like we really care deeply about understanding the emotional complexities of life, the emotional motivations. Um, we experience emotions in a very visceral way. And I used to think that I was an FE user and I needed to get away from people to stop the input of their emotions so I could process my own. And I mean, to, to a degree that was true, but it wasn't because I was using FE, it was because I am an FI user and I do need a lot of downtime to process my emotions. Um, which, I mean, I'm kind of interested in how you guys, if you are an FI user, how you sort through your emotions. I like, long car rides by myself and listening to like my sad piano music it just it feels very like cleansing just to get alone and kind of just let all of those emotions just kind of play out organically um so i'm just kind of curious if anyone else can relate to that um and another, another thing that kind of adds the confusion is that a high FI user, the way we want to understand people is we're really open and willing to experience their emotional inner atmosphere, right? Like, I want to feel how you're feeling, like step into your emotional experience. And again, that can be confused with FE. And then another thing that is that I read that was interesting was that because FI users are so permeable and there's so much like 
murkiness and muck out there one way that we can have like this just visceral reaction is through repulsion and disgust which is very hard to hard to hide our visceral emotional reaction to some people where sometimes like I try to keep an open heart towards people and understand that, you know, everyone has their own story. Everyone is healing from something. But if someone, if I encounter someone who like their energy is just feels really toxic and yuck, I'm just immediately like a stone wall closed off. I will avoid them. Um, if someone is being acting just, you know, in a manner that is um, reprehensible to me if they're being a bully or a jerk or whatever, I will, I will like switch into TE mode and just like drop the hammer down on them as I see fit. But then again, I'm very willing to give people second chances because, I mean, we're really all on a journey, right? So, oh yeah, so if I, on like, it's journey, like we're talking about what matters to us over the course of a lifetime. And I can deeply relate to this is under stress, you know, we, we can absorb so much of um, the negative energy around us or the negative opinions others have of us that we can start to feel like we have lost a part of ourselves or we've been swallowed up by our environment. And there is always this journey to reclaim parts of ourselves that we feel like we might have lost along the way and a drive towards deeper authenticity and this notion of continual rebirth in coming home to a truer version of yourself and this ability to see who you are like intrinsically as sacred and wanting to honor that in you know yourself and in others um, just like I want to see the intrinsic nature of others and I want to honor that in a very meaningful way. And that is something that has always um, motivated me and probably always will. Like I think one thing that's really special about FI is that we are always doing these internal checks for like authenticity and we are always hyper aware of how we are affecting and impacting other people and I know for me I want to impact people in a positive way and I one of the regrets that I you know I struggle to let go of the most in life is in times where I was reacting out of my own pain um self-rejection you know and I I hurt people like that I have hurt people and I you know that has been one of the hardest things for me to to forgive myself for especially when I am you know when I'm in a right frame of mind I so deeply care about people on an individual level I don't want to hurt people and um, a goal for me, you know, after everything I've been through is to get to a point where I am very healthy and settled in who I am to the point where, and I feel like, you know, we're all getting there, right? Like I've made a lot of progress here, still have ways to go, but where I don't need affirmation from other people. I'm so secure in who I am that I can just freely give that to other people because I feel like people are just so hungry for that. And I think especially in people who are driven 
to whether it's Voltology or just Myers-Briggs at large, I think we're just really hungering to have to be seen and to have who we truly are deeply affirmed and even to feel special. I really feel like it's everyone's God-given right to feel a sense of specialness and like um, that sacredness of their core identity. And I really just, you know, why I'm doing these videos is I want to, however I can, help other people to be able to connect with um, themselves in a deeper level and to see how they are special. And I do believe that God created every human being and we're all unique. Like even though we're getting, you know, I love the idea of being able to like sort people out and fit them into these little categories. Like we are all still special, right? We all, even if we can narrow it down with precision, what cognitive functions we're using, we're all still unique. We all still have our own unique development, even from like a voltology standpoint. Um, no one has a twin out there, which was a funny uh, point that was brought up today in, in a Discord chat. But anyway, so FI at its best, we in that, you know, kind of like the fun mythological um, viewpoint here, uh, FI bestows life, vitality, and healing through unconditional love, which, I mean, really resonates with me as something that this really high ideal that I want in my life, you know, as a parent, um, as a daughter, as a wife, you know, as a Christian, I value so much like seeing people for who they really are and loving that unconditionally. And that is what is unique and special about FI and what FI has to offer the world in its continual search for self, the true self, and then reflecting out of like, out of this healthy state of self, being able to extend out a very pure acceptance to other people and a safe environment where other people can reclaim their truest self, right? So anyways, I think that was what I wanted to cover. Um, guys, thank you so much for listening this long. If you're still hanging in there, um, thank you for coming along with me as always. I love you guys. Bye.